If you know one thing about space, it's that you don't enter it unprotected by a ship or a suit. If you get blown out of an airlock without either, that's it, you're done. Or are you? In the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, we see something that goes against pretty much every other death by space we've ever seen. So if you were blown out of an airlock, what would really happen to your body? And do you have to be one of the Guardians of the Galaxy to survive it? All right, I'm talking specifically about this scene in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 when Peter Quill intentionally exits his ship to gift Gamora his kick-ass mask. It looks like he spends a fair amount of time in the vacuum of space without exploding or bleeding from the eyes like we've seen in other films, so which version of Death by Space is accurate? First of all, space is deadly. There's no air for you to breathe in space and you would eventually suffocate, but what else happens? Humans, like every other organism on Earth, evolved under some kind of pressure. Pushing down on me, pushing down on you, no man ask for. For us primates, that pressure has always been about 100,000 pascals, or around 15 pounds per square inch of pressure, and that comes from the mass of air that surrounds us. That pressure, in part, helped determine what our bodies would look like, how our blood would carry gas, and even how our lungs would be able to force air into themselves. So if all the air was suddenly sucked away from us like through some mysterious hole, then it, it would be, you'd be, <coughs> then you'd be, <coughs> So if all the air was sucked away from you through some theoretical hole, you'd be forgiven in thinking that your blood and your body and your lungs might kind of expand outwards without the inward push of pressure, and they might more or less expand to their breaking points like marshmallows in a vacuum chamber. But what would really happen to the human body in space, aside from choking to death, of course, is a bit more subdued. Peter Quill was lucky because space turns the body into a bloated bag, not a bomb. In the history of human spaceflight, no person has fully subjected their bodies to the void, but we do have a good idea of what would happen to their bodies if they did because of experiments we've conducted. Like in 1965 when NASA put a bunch of dogs in a vacuum chamber and depressurized it, effectively throwing them out of an airlock. Here's what happened next. I'm sorry about this. All animals exposed to the low pressure for longer than five seconds tended to lose consciousness and began to swell and collapse in between nine and 11 seconds. Within the next five seconds, unless the animals were recompressed, they began to show marked expans expansion due to gases and gas expulsion from the stomach and lower bowel, often leading in simultaneous, oh, simultaneous projectile vomiting, oh, defecation, oh, come on, and, and urination, oh, and the water vapor and gas expansion were of such magnitude that the animals quickly became immobilized with the neck, body, and extremities in extended position, similar in appearance to an inflated goat skin bag, it can't get worse, right? It's fine. While at the low pressure, the, the saliva, uh, the saliva-like excretions and urine became frozen and partially dehyd- like a piecicle? Partially dehydrated. It was also noticed in several animals that after recompression to ground level, the tongue was coated in ice. After the test chamber was repressurized, the dogs that did recover, some didn't depending on how long they were exposed to vacuum, returned to functional inside 30 minutes. After 24 hours, the dogs that did survive were back to normal, which fits with another study, also in 1965, also by NASA, on chimps. But all of the chimps in this study survived even after being exposed to the vacuum of space for minutes and showed no ill effects afterwards. So, if you were thrown out of an airlock and you look like a gross blue Gumby creature, first the air in your tissues and your blood would boil, except they wouldn't get hot, so you would just bloat, but your skin is strong enough so it wouldn't rip. And then all of the air in your lungs and in your bowels would force their way out, 
and it would rip your lungs tissue and freeze your tongue and it also it would also pee your pants and then poop your pants and then you might projectile vomit as well and then you lose consciousness but you would not die immediately in fact you have a few seconds of sanity and you could be safely recovered and returned to your normal state if you were saved quickly enough this useful consciousness time according to all the experiments that we've done is around 15 uncomfortable seconds and death follows minutes thereafter. Based on the experiments that we've done, there is a finite amount of time where a bloated gross Peter could save Gamora's life and a finite amount of time before they both die after passing out. Did they make it? Let's look at this scene again. Since a lack of oxygen is the real reason that space kills you eventually, we want a total time without air allowing for the passage of time with camera cuts. So it looks like Peter spends about 10 seconds putting his mask on Gamora. This is the time that he has to be usefully conscious. It also looks like Gamora is exposed for 70 seconds before the mask is put on her, and Peter is exposed to space for a total of 50 seconds after he removes his mask before both are saved by the Ravagers. According to everything that we just went through, all three of these numbers check out. This is enough time to be usefully conscious, and this is enough time to be unconscious but savable. It could totally happen. In fact, there's another unintentional experiment that proves this. In 1965, NASA test subject Jim LeBlanc's suit accidentally depressurized inside of a full vacuum vacuum chamber. He passed out within 15 seconds, but was revived 30 seconds later after the chamber was repressurized. His eyes didn't pop out of his head, he didn't explode, his body didn't freeze solid, but he did say that the last memory he had before he passed out was the saliva on his tongue bubbling away. If Jim could survive this kind of exposure in this time frame, Star-Lord 2 could survive his contact with the cosmos. So, how long could Star-Lord or you survive in space unprotected? Well, based on all the experiments we've done and the accidents that we've had, you could be conscious for about 15 seconds before you passed out and then have minutes to live in which time you could be saved. What I'm trying to say is that that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 is more or less scientifically accurate right down to the frost on Peter's face from his instantaneously evaporated sweat. Although before the Ravagers beamed them aboard, they, they might want to change both of their pants. Because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes and on Facebook and Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes of my show like I did today. Thank you, again, for doing it. The dance-off scene at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is a lot of fun, but remember that Ronan only had to touch his staff down to the surface of Xandar and it would explode, right? He had 62 seconds to do that. Like, just... Ooh, child, boop. No, come on, dance up, boop, boop. No, come on, I'm, I'm just trying to distract, boop.